The movie begins in Seoul, South Korea. A legendary assassin nicknamed Goblin obtained an order from his boss to kill a group of gangsters. He became accompanied by means of another assassin named Young Min. They controlled to complete this mission, but unfortunately, Young Min, who became still an beginner assassin, suffered extreme injuries. Du Hyun then brought him home to treat his injuries. It didn't take long for the police to track the client of the assassin. He's Kim, a businessman. Unfortunately, they were unable to track down the hitman company that Kim employed. In the investigation meeting, the police assumed that there were two perpetrators. According to the police, one perpetrator was a professional while the other perpetrator was an amateur all of which was proven by the investigation at the crime scene. The police suspected that the professional perpetrator was the infamous assassin nicknamed Goblin. If the police's suspicion was true, then they were ready to hunt down the organization where Goblin worked. In anticipation, the police assigned an agent to disguise and infiltrate the organization. Du Hyun was seen taking care of Young Min's wound. As soon as Young Min started waking up from his fainting, Du Hyun told Young Min that his phone got a lot of notifications while he was passed out. He then left after saying that. Young Min checked his phone and found out that his daughter was sent to the hospital immediately. He immediately went to the hospital. Un Ju. Young Min's daughter was taken to the ER because she had a heart attack and Young Min couldn't come to see her in the ER. After Eun Ju managed to pass the critical condition, Young Min went to see her. He was upset because the hospital fee was not cheap. Soon, he got a message from the organization to gather at the headquarters. Young Min rushed to the headquarters. As soon as he got there, he witnessed another assassin being tortured by their boss, Beck. He found out that the man was a spy sent by the police. To prove his suspicion, he called the last call list on the spy's phone, and sure enough, it was a policeman named Detective Choi who picked up. It was proven that the guy was a spy. Beck then ordered young men to finish him off. But young Min who was an amateur looked nervous. Suddenly, Du Hyun came and mercilessly executed the spy. Meanwhile, at the police station, Detective Choi heard the news that his spy was killed during his mission. He and the other police immediately checked the man's house to find traces of the suspect. After searching the house, he accidentally found a small note in the calendar, showing the location of the headquarters of the organization which was located at the Sangmi Furniture Building. Young Min, who needed a lot of money to pay for his daughter's hospital fee, asked his boss for a new mission. His boss then gave him a new mission to kill a high-ranking official from their own organization, who is known to be the Goblin's mentor. Because the target was very dangerous, he hesitated, but since the pay was great, he dared himself to do the mission. He then went to the target's apartment. Before he went inside, Young Min hesitated because he knew that the target he would face would be Du Hyun's mentor who was good at martial arts. He then remembered his sick daughter, Unju, and for the sake of his daughter, he dared himself. Elsewhere, Du Hyun returned to his house. He looked at his daughter named Yina Yina as about the same age as Young Min's daughter, Unju. His wife, Han, pretended to be asleep. He deliberately did not welcome her husband's arrival. When he saw his wife sleeping, Du Hyun suddenly remembered his wife's message for him to immediately retire from his job. Han didn't want Yi Na to be humiliated when she grew up and found out that her father is an assassin. While thinking about his wife's words, Du Hyun left from there. Young Min had found his target. He challenged him to a duel. Realizing that Young Min was not playing around, the target took his knife. The duel continued and Young Min was almost beaten, but thanks to his strong determination to pay for his child's hospital fees, he managed to beat the target. After the duel, Young Min then cleaned himself up in the toilet. He then faced the boss while handing over the target's knife as a sign that his mission had been successful. His boss then gave him the money he promised, but the amount was not as much as promised earlier. Of course, Young Min became angry because he felt lied to. He was desperate to kill his boss, and after that, Young Min immediately took away the money and left from there. Soon after, Du Hyung came to the room to find his dying boss. Before his boss died, he told him that the one that stabbed him was Young Min. Suddenly, Detective Choi showed up to ambush the building. He was shocked when he saw Beck's condition. Spontaneously, Detective Choi suspected that Du Hyun was the one who killed Beck. He was arrested and brought to the police station. After a year, 
Du Hyun's wife had lost her patience. Without hesitation, she sent a farewell letter to Du Hyun. In the letter, Han told him to never look for her in Yina. Han said that when Yina grew up, she would tell her that her father had died, and after receiving the farewell letter, Young Min came to visit him in prison. Young Min intended to apologize for the tragic wrongful arrest, but Du Hyun, who was sad, didn't want to see anyone that day. A few days later, with the money stolen from his former boss, Young Min formed his own hitman organization and started to spread terror. His hard work paid off. It didn't take long for him to become a successful boss of a new organization, and as a result, Young Min was officially labeled by the police as a federal fugitive. Eight years have passed since Du Hyun was imprisoned and he was finally free. Meanwhile, at an elementary school in Seoul, South Korea, Young Min's daughter, Eun Ju, had grown up into a naughty girl and often bullied others. Couldn't accept seeing her friend being bullied by Eun Ju, Yi Na, who turned out to be in the same elementary school as Eun Ju, came to save her friend. A fight broke out, but fortunately, the teacher intervenes. In the evening, at Young Min's house, he succeeded in life and became rich. When he arrived home, he immediately had dinner with his daughter, but Eun Ju, which rarely got affection from her father, was so indifferent toward her father, that even when Young Min intended to take her on vacation abroad, she actually refused and just leave. In the morning, Du Hyun was seen working. After being released, he manages to get a job at a car wash. The working atmosphere was so warm and the boss was also kind. After work, in his apartment, Du Hyun suddenly remembered his wife and daughter. It's been eight years without any news from them. Du Hyun intended to find the whereabouts of his family. The next day, Du Hyun visited the police station to meet Detective Choi. Du Hyun asked for his help to find the whereabouts of his daughter and wife. Detective Choi agreed to help as long as Du Hyun agreed to give him information about Young Min, his former partner in the criminal world. However, because Du Hyun was tired of dealing with the criminal world, he refused and left. Later that night, Du Hyun's boss invited him and the other employee to dinner. His boss was too drunk and lost control. He suddenly beat Du Hyun, and of course, the news of the incident reached Detective Choi. He initially thought that Du Hyun was the suspect in the beating. He immediately rushed to the police station where Du Hyun was detained. Arriving at the police station, from a distance, the detective saw Du Hyun was battered and was the victim of the incident. Du Hyun's boss admitted that he had made a mistake and apologized to Du Hyun. The two of them reconciled and decided to solve the problem amicably. From a distance, Detective Choi who saw the moment finally concluded that the prison had turned Du Hyun into a good person. The next morning, Detective Choi met Du Hyun and claimed that he was proud of him because he had changed after finishing his sentence in prison. In return for that, Detective Choi gave him the address where his wife and daughter lived. Du Hyun was surprised to get such kindness from Detective Choi. He immediately went to the address after work. Apparently, Han, his wife, opened a salon business. When he was busy looking at his wife's salon from a distance, unexpectedly, he was greeted by Yi Na from behind. Of course, Yi Na didn't know that Du Hyun was her father. Yi Na asked him the reason why he kept looking at her mother's salon. Finally, Du Hyun realized that the girl is Yi Na, his daughter. Panic, he didn't want his identity to be disclosed. He immediately left for his car. While continuing to watch from afar, Du Hyun saw someone bump into Yi Na and made her drop her phone. Not accepting the man left without an apology, Yi Na called him and asked him to apologize. The man was angry and almost hit Yi Na. Immediately, Du Hyun came to save her. When he was about to beat this man, Han came out of the salon. She was shocked to see Du Hyun who was freed from prison. She then told Yi Na that Du Hyun was her old friend. Yi Na then thanked him after saving her. Shortly after, the three of them had dinner together at a restaurant. Yi Na broke the ice by throwing a joke. Han choked on hearing that and left them to go to the toilet. Suddenly, Yi Na asked Du Hyun to take a selfie and even gave him her phone number. Yi Na also said that she was ready to help if Du Hyun wanted to get closer to her mother. After dinner, Du Hyun went home to get some sleep, but before that, 
he took the time to see a selfie of himself with Yi Na earlier. A happy look showed on his face as he saw his daughter's smile. Suddenly, someone called him and it turned out to be Han. She asked him to meet her at a cafe. After they met, Han told him about her life after he was sent to prison. Han admitted that when Du Hyeon was in prison, she and Yi Na decided to migrate to the United States, where he had a household with a man, but it didn't work out. Not long ago, Han and Yi Na returned to South Korea and opened a beauty salon business. Han said that she had never seen Yi Na so happy when she met new people. Han advised Du Hyeon not to approach Yi Na anymore because she was afraid that if she knew that Du Hyeon is her father, she would be very shocked. The next morning, as if he had not cared about Han's warning that night, Du Hyeon stopped by Yi Na's school. He intended to give a watch to his daughter, but suddenly, he remembered Han's message last night which made him doubt his intention. When he was about to leave, he accidentally got hit by a car, and coincidentally, the car that hit him was Eunju's car. The driver came out and intended to take responsibility, Yi Na who saw the incident also came to help. Seeing Yi Na, Du Hyeon suddenly got up as if nothing had happened, but Yi Na then saw blood coming from Du Hyeon's hand. The driver immediately took Du Hyeon to the clinic to be treated. After being treated, the driver and Du Hyeon exchanged business cards. After that, Du Hyeon went out of the clinic, and soon, Young Min showed up. He asked about the condition of the victim who was hit. The driver said that the victim was fine while handing him Du Hyeon's business card. Young Min was shocked to find out that the person who was hit earlier was Du Hyeon his old part. In the evening, Du Hyeon and Yi were waiting for the bus at the bus stop. Yi Na then told Du Hyeon about her mother who was lonely and tend to cry all night. She hoped that Du Hyeon will immediately approach his mother. In the middle of the chat, Du Hyeon decided to give the gift he had prepared earlier. Yi Na was so happy and hugged him. At his house, Young Min was deep in thought. He was worried that Du Hyeon would take revenge on him because of the tragedy eight years ago. His worry made him delusional and started seeing Du Hyeon. The next morning, when Han was preparing breakfast, she saw the new watch that Yi Na was wearing. She suspected that it was a gift from Du Hyeon and then told Yi Na to take it off, but Yi Na didn't want to. Yi Na said that she never felt this comfortable knowing new people like Du Hyeon. After hearing that, Han was sad. That morning, at his office, Young Min ordered his underlings to monitor Du Hyeon's movement. Young Min was worried that Du Hyeon would take revenge on him. That night, at the car wash where Du Hyeon worked, Han deliberately visited Du Hyeon who was cleaning up. Han invited Du Hyeon to her salon to shave, and after that, Han told him that Yi Na really missed a father figure. Han once again told Du Hyeon that whatever happened, never made Yi Na disappointed. The next morning, at the car wash, Young Min's underlings came to mess around. They intended to find Du Hyeon to beat him up. Du Hyeon, who heard the commotion, finally came out and he was immediately beaten up for no apparent reason. In the incident, one of Young Min's underlings mentioned Young Min's name as the one who ordered him to beat Du Hyeon. Du Hyeon was shocked to hear that the mastermind behind all this was Young Min. After beating Du Hyeon, Young Min's underlings returned to face their boss, but instead of praise, Young Min was mad. He said that he never told them to beat Du Hyeon. From the start, he just told them to monitor him, but strangely, after being beaten by Young Min, instead of giving up, the man instead became even more excited to try out the legendary goblin's power. Meanwhile, at the clinic, Du Hyeon was seen receiving treatment while one of Young Min's underlings kept monitoring him from the outside. Meanwhile, Young Min looked even more upset with the problem. He was taken home by his driver, and in the car, again, Young Min emphasized that he only wanted him to watch over Du Hyeon not to beat him up. The next day, Du Hyeon had been recovered and started working again. Meanwhile, Young Min's underlings were seen watching from a distance. Soon he called his boss. He was told to take pictures of Du Hyeon's activities and then immediately sent the photos to Young Min. Elsewhere, Eunju was seen bullying another student. Suddenly, Yi Na showed up and tried to defend her friend who was being bullied. Didn't accept what Yi Na did, Unju then pushed her from behind and made her hit her head on a pillar until it bled. Shortly after, 
Du Hyeon got a call about Yi Na. He then rushed to the hospital to see her condition. Yi Na was going to have surgery because he had a concussion. On the other hand, Eunju panicked. She didn't think that her actions could lead to a fatal consequence. Eunju then called her father. Shortly after, Young Min arrived at the school to meet Eunju, who was detained in the teacher's office. Young Min, who was an assassin, threatened the teacher. Of course, the homeroom teacher was shocked. At the hospital, Yi Na's surgery was a success, but she was not yet regained consciousness. The doctor said that Yi Na might have suffered brain damage caused by the trauma. Du Hyeon initiated to finish the incident. He went to the police station to make an official report, but the police on duty actually persuaded Du Hyeon to drop the issue as well as the lawyer that agreed with it. Du Hyeon felt that something was wrong. He thought that both parties had been bribed. Finally, Du Hyeon, who was disappointed, returned to the hospital. Soon, Yi Na's friend named Da Hai came to visit. Da Hai then told Du Hyeon the details of the incident. She admitted that it was a student named Eunju who pushed Yi Na. After hearing that, Du Hyeon immediately rushed to visit the school to meet the homeroom teacher and a female student named Eunju so that this problem could be resolved. But somehow, the homeroom teacher covered up the incident and was reluctant to help solve the problem. Du Hyeon didn't give up. He then looked for the girl named Eunju. When it was time to go home from school, he greeted Eunju nicely, but suddenly there was an attack from behind. It turned out to be one of Young Min's underlings who attacked him. He also took Eunju away. At that very moment, Du Hyeon saw the face of the underlings that were familiar to him. Du Hyeon suddenly remembered that the face was the one that beat him up at the car walk. He finally realized that Eunju must have something to do with Young Min. On the other hand, one of Young Min's underlings who managed to pick up Eunju immediately informed his boss that Eunju was almost kidnapped by Du Hyeon. Young Min thought that Du Hyeon wanted to take revenge on him by kidnapping his daughter, and it made Young Min mad. Finally, he gave the order to kill Du Hyeon at that very moment. His underlings went straight to the place where Du Hyeon worked. They threatened the owner of the car wash to tell them where Du Hyeon was. It didn't stop there. They also went to the hospital. There, Han, Du Hyeon's wife, was beaten. Meanwhile, the other of Young Min's underlings also came to Du Hyeon's apartment. After successfully meeting Du Hyeon, one of them gave him a phone where it showed a video call. Yi Na and Han were being held captive. Seeing his family in danger made Du Hyeon so mad. In the end, the soul of the fierce assassin rose and Young Min's underlings were finished with ease. The news of Du Hyeon's anger finally reached Young Min. He then ordered his men to kidnap Yi Na and take her to the Sangmi Furniture Building where they used to work. Meanwhile, Du Hyeon arrived at the hospital and only found Han who had fainted. While thinking about where to look for Yi Na, Du Hyeon thought of calling Detective Choi. He reported that his daughter was kidnapped by Young Min and he told Detective Choi that he would turn back into a monster to save his daughter. In the morning, Du Hyeon started his mission to save his daughter. He blocked Eun Ju's car and beat up her bodyguards. After that, he told Eun Ju to call Young Min her father. After managing to contact Young Min, Du Hyeon told Young Min to immediately hand over his daughter, Yi Na. Soon, Young Min's men came to pick up Eun Ju. A fierce fight ensued. It was seen that Young Min's underlings were easily beaten up. Finally, one of them who was dying agreed to tell where Yi Na was being held. After finding out where Yi Na was held captive, Du Hyeon rushed to the location, but before heading there, he left Eunju with the car wash boss and told the boss to take good care of her. He also told the car wash boss that he was going to go to the Sangmi building. Meanwhile, Detective Choi got the news of a massacre case. He didn't expect that it was Du Hyeon who did all this. While investigating the crime scene, he found a clue about where to find Du Hyeon. They went straight to the Sangmi building. Meanwhile, after arriving at the building, Du Hyeon was greeted by Young Min that told him to hand over Eunju. Du Hyeon also told Young Min to hand over his daughter. They argued and shortly, Young Min's underlings showed up. They immediately attacked Du Hyeon without further ado. Even though Du Hyeon was injured, he didn't lose his fighting power. He succeeded in defeating Young Min's underlings. Thought this was a good opportunity because Du Hyeon was injured. 
Young Min suddenly attacked. This duel ended in a draw. Young Min begged Du Hyeon to hand over Eunju. It didn't take long for the request to be granted. Eunju was brought there by Du Hyeon's boss. Seeing his daughter wasn't hurt in the slightest, he was finally willing to return Yi Na. Finally, the two reconciled. Shortly after, Han, accompanied by the police and an ambulance, showed up. Yi Na was taken back to the hospital to receive treatment while Du Hyeon himself was seen to have experienced a severe wound. Despite the excruciating pain he felt, he was happy to see his daughter finally saved. He felt like his job as a father was finished. Du Hyeon finally collapsed while reminiscing about his friendship with Young Min which was destroyed due to a misunderstanding. Thanks for watching please like share and subscribe for more videos.